Well, hello everyone. I'm glad to be here in Paris to give this talk, Visual Recommendations, the Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. My name is Paul Winek. It's been a few years now that I work at Algolia. This is a picture from 2018, and I speak about the things I work on here. Today, I'm doing machine learning in the lovely team recommend, building algorithms to surface your content and to expose your catalog. We're going to talk about visual recommendations. And the agenda is pretty straightforward. First, we look at the good use cases. Then we look at, let's say, bad use cases, or those that need some more love. And finally, I know you're here for some fun, we look at the ugly use cases. But why talk about visual things in a tech conference in our flat world of screens? Well, because the world is visual, and so the web is too. Some actors of the internet have understood this years ago, starting with these two kings of visual user experience online, Pinterest and Etsy. They both know that visual is the main sense we use to make sense of something new. And they know exploration is key. Pinterest says that 97% of their top searches are unbranded, which means people come to the website searching for generic terms and not for specific brands, which means there is an opportunity to surface a lot of content. Etsy understood this well because they are selling a bit of everything with various small creators. That's why they implemented search by image, so that you can know just upload what you're looking for. It is hard to put this doll into words. Likewise, on Pinterest, you can shop from pins. From a picture, they recommend items which match the picture's content. Here, some rugs. Pinterest say that this levels the playing field so that small shops can be discovered on those generic queries. But who will level the playing field with Pinterest, Etsy, and those mega marketplaces so that your business can exist in this space? This is why we shipped Looking Similar. We believe that all sites and apps, regardless of how small, should be able to please the users with great visual content. Our new model will look at your catalog and will give you image recommendations with confidence scores so that you can filter recommendations based on attributes or on the model confidence score to build various kinds of visual experiences. This model is now live since a couple months and has growing usage in the, in the wild. Thanks to this quick adoption, today I can show you the best and the worst of image recommendations. All the examples you see today, except one, have been built or tested with looking similar. Let us start on a world tour of countries and language, starting with the good use cases. You, you will see examples from all over the world because the visual language is a common language. So even on websites where I don't speak the language, I could still find content that I can enjoy. In many cases, visual recommendations help the users make a meaningful choice. Imagine yourself in the following situation. You are at home ready to make dinner after a good day of coding. You open the cupboard to grab some ingredients, and the handle breaks in your hand and cannot be repaired. What would you do? Thanks to the website cabinetparts.com, you don't have to throw away the whole cabinet. You can just repair the specific piece that you're missing. So I go in cabinet parts, and I find this French farm pool that looks like mine, but not quite. Mine was slightly longer and less curvy. How can I put this into the search query in the top search bar? I don't have to, because cabinet parts added a new section using similar image model looking similar, so that you can explore related items from this image. And let me quickly scan through it. Oh, yes, it's the number six, the slightly flatter one that I need to repair my kitchen. One thing I love in the cabinet parts use case is that they have handled quite well the product variants that Sammy mentioned earlier as something you want to take into account. So here, if you look at this oval knob and look at the similar ones for the slightly different replacement piece that you need, you are looking at recommendations from within all images, but only displayed with one variant, the current uh, antique bronze finish, at one time, so that you see the overall best matches in your choice of color. 
And if on cabinet parts, you select another finish, let's say Italian nickel, the results change to display the color you like among all results of similar images. Talking about color, I spent an embarrassingly long amount of time looking at the Noteboom Textiles website. It's a lovely fabrics wholesaler from the Netherlands. If, like me, you spend some time on the website, you'll start recognizing related items that have different titles, but that are very close to the style of others that you like. As a returning visitor, this is nice. But what if you're a first-time visitor? Thanks to their new UI section, Noteboom could add tissue associé, that is, related uh, fabrics. This gives new visitors like you a chance to dive directly into the deep catalog items, which are close to the only thing the website currently knows about you, your interest for this dense floral pattern. Another use case high on patterns is xtdeco.ero. They're a nice shop selling decorative items and wallpapers in Romania. If you look here, this, the item they sell is not uh, the furniture, but rather the wallpaper. And now on their product pages, you can find similar items, uh, what they call forte assemanatore, that is very similar items. But do you notice something here? There is some redundancy in this UI. The section that shows variations here, variati pe assez a tema, shows the same items as the section uh, very similar. It looks like they didn't leverage the duplication here. Maybe this is on purpose, and this is to expose further the variations that they have. But like Sami mentioned, based on your use case, you might want to use the duplication. By deduplicating our recommendations using the unique item ID that you have in your catalog, you make sure to only display non variants and to expose your catalog further. Still, their use case works really great. And I think it shows even better on items that are specific and not just abstract textures, like this wallpaper from Savannah uh, Forest Views, which is matched in the Forte Seminatore similar item section with other landscape wallpapers or other forest style. Yet I think the use case really shines on decorative items like this one. You have to keep in mind what the model sees in such an image. The underlying image models that we're working with are trained on ImageNet classes. So they excel at differentiating animals from vegetables or household items. They can recognize classes, categories really well. Here's an example of what the model has been trained to recognize. On the top left, a goldfish with easy and hard examples. On the top right, an artichoke. I don't know about you, the top top right image I would recognize as artichoke. The rest, I am not as good as this image model for sure. So if we get back to this lampa that has an ostrich, how would our model uh, suggest recommendations on that? I was pleased to see that all of the top matches are other animals holding a light bulb in their beak or hand. Final example, how do you think our model will do on this obstructed item? Computer vision always has the challenge of handling data where an obstruction hides the content. Here, it was lovely to see that all the suggestions from our visual model are other rectangles hiding an animal, rabbits and giraffe alike. As you can see, some use cases are obviously visual and are a good fit for visual recommendation models. What does this mean for all the other use cases? Does it mean that they're bad? Would you choose, based on the looks alone, your next Airbnb rental? Would you choose on its face a guitar? Would you pick just from a picture a pair of shoes? or pick your cards for a new Pokemon deck just based on the images, that sounds pretty bad. Well, the truth is, these use cases are not bad per se. They're just often badly done. You might want to use visual signal alongside other elements, filtering categories, adding price range, making sure the items are available in your size and area 
All those use cases are still valuable if you do it the right way. I'll show you an example of doing it the wrong way. This is what I called the what you see is what you get problem from a talk I gave on the internals of this model. The problem is quite simple. Imagine you're searching for a rental near a conference, let's say in San Francisco. You need a bed and a desk. The first one is nice, but I want to see other options, maybe with more uh, natural lighting. So we look at image recommendations and take the nearest neighbor, nearest different neighbor. And it looks similar. It is nice. It matches my visual criteria. I'm about to purchase. And then I realize that this is actually in Boston, not at all in San Francisco. And if I take this uh, actual booking, I might get to the conference uh, from the conference to the home, but I will never get back tomorrow for the rest of the conference. So clearly, a good visual match can be a bad result for your business. How can you leverage the power of image vector recommendations while supporting your business use case? Again, those use cases are not bad per se. They just need to be done the right way. So your next Airbnb rental, that's use, good to use visual elements if you filter locally relevant options. For a guitar, maybe it's not the main purchase criteria, but visual recommendations can be a good plan B, as you will see soon. For a pair of shoes, there are other criteria, availability, size, etc. But once I've chosen, help me refine with visuals. And even for your Pokemon deck, maybe this is not a good idea for your whole deck building, but Visual images could be a good way to explore and discover items that you have not thought about. So these use cases are all valuable if you do them the right way. Let me show you an example with Dan's guitar. Dan sells various musical instruments in Denmark. And you could say their business is not a very visual one. Customers don't buy based on the looks. So visual recommendations might seem like a weird choice. Let's see where we're going. Anyway. This is an acoustic mandolin, quite nice instrument in a guitar shape. But I'm not sure I'm ready to spend 2,700 crowns on it. I am a first time visitor on Dan's website. Can someone show me around? Usually, yes, there is a way to leverage previous user events to guide new users into a direction. On Dan's website, if you look at this guitar, they leverage uh, Andre Copte Oxa. That is, others also bought. Click and conversion signals to show you here complementary items, or rather a mix of both. The first one is an alternative, another guitar, while the next ones are mediators that would go well with. You can use these models to show only alternatives. At Algolia, we call this the related products model. This allows you to leverage wisdom of crowds. As a new user, I can follow the tracks that your power users left as I know travel the same path that your previous users did. So let's get back to my mandolin. Can someone show me around? The issue is that the mandolin is quite new in the catalog. And so there are no André Copte Oxa on which I could leverage events to guide the user. What can you do? Worse than that, there are only two acoustic mandolins on your website, and the other looks nothing like this one. At this point, would you prefer to show a blank screen to your users? I think it would be good to display some visual alternatives. And maybe the best thing you can show when you have no user events is to show the most similar items in your catalog, which right now are guitars. True, this is not the perfect uh, recommendation that you can make. But at the same time, having something is better than nothing. At least you always have something to show. In other use cases, you can use the visual similarity scores to better understand or to refine your understanding of a user. Let's say you are selling shoes and your user is browsing this item. And when you look at the visual recommendations that you get from this, they are all in the same brand, same category, same collection even. That probably can help you know that if your user likes Air Max Nike 97 with this wavy design, you might only uh, send them other Air Max 97 shoes. But what if your user likes Reeboks in bright colors? Look at your visual recommendations. 
And you may realize that this user could be served the pastel New Balance collection that you also have, especially if these are in stock and the first item is not. At least that's something your, can, your users can convert. This is something that the French leader of e-commerce La Redoute has understood perfectly. When you look at the product detail page on La Redoute, you can see this. The item is prominent. There is a high definition visual. And at the bottom of it, you can search for similar articles. This allows you to explore alternatives in context. They use a similar API than looking similar. And thanks to that, they can provide immediately some alternatives. If when you look at these books, there is something you don't like, be it the sole being a little small or the white thread being a bit visible, you can immediately find alternatives. I think they are killing it. And if you follow the La Redoute state of the art approach, make sure to display it in the other places they do. Here, when I'm selecting an item that needs to choose the size and the stock is varying based on the size, if I am size 36, I am disappointed that I cannot buy this robe that I like. So La Redoute has put very prominently in the size selection item, a visual recommendations button. And if your size is not available, just click. You might well find alternatives that are both in your looks, but also in stock. If you follow this approach, make sure to follow the few tips that they give to always display the original item alongside so that your users can choose and compare, understanding the difference. Also, make sure to only display elements that are in stock in that size. It would be a pity for your customer to pick another robe and then in the cart, ready for purchase, to realize that actually it's not in stock as well. Finally, if you can offer some sort options, that is always welcome. By default, sort by similarity. But if you can offer more, offer the usual sorts that you know your users will appreciate most. So like you can see, those use cases are not bad per se. They just need to be correctly implemented. With the tips I gave you, you should be ready to fight for the harder use cases and to crack their implementation. But this talk wouldn't be complete without the last kind of use cases. The kind which can be saved, even with your team's business knowledge and all your careful implementation. The kind of use cases which are simply the ugly. Let's be honest, friends. I know you came to this talk for the fun stuff. I hope you will enjoy this section because some use cases are just not a good fit. I will start with the data set I found interesting. Uh, we had 70,000 user reviews of locations like restaurants, bars, etc., And most of them had pictures. So I was like, let's use visual recommendation on user reviews. And on food pics, I can say it works quite decent. Here, matching Caveman Kitchen to King Donut. Quite good recommendations. I, I'm actually getting a little hungry here. I am happy that this is the last talk. But let's focus on the use case. Um, so you can start to see the problem. These are correct recommendations, but the imagery is bad. Well, if you think the food pictures are bad, wait until you get to the storefront listings, where people take a blurry shot of the restaurant before putting in a review. It can be a blurry storefront. It can be even worse. We have those dark, moody ambience shots of the inside of bars. And at that point, I know I cannot save it. I mean, what is the only thing in common between Whiskey Blue and Thai Market are the redness of their wall decorations. Better look at food pictures. And damn it, now I'm hungry again. Let us change use case so that we can focus on the end of this talk. You know how there was this meme lying around with the beginning of AIs like Midjourney about how AIs are bad at hands? Well, our model to kinda, or rather it's not bad, but it was a bit obsessed with hands. We had this uh, uh, re review from a customer saying that some results are a bit weird, like this where a terracotta planter gets matched to a pair of gloves. But when you look about a bit further, you can understand the problem here is maybe not the model, but rather the data. If you give me a blurry shot of a hand holding something, and I have to compare it with the rest of your catalog, other blurry shots of hands are actually the closest thing I can find. 
This is a problem that in data science we call garbage in, garbage out, like Lucia mentioned earlier. So how can we improve these use cases? Of course, using better data. If we are able to use focused imagery with just the item or even just high quality pictures, might be enough for the model to detect. So focused imagery, sure. Another approach could be also to implement some object segmentation. If we detect foreground and background, we can remove the hand and focus on the item in the picture. But really, I think the solution here is simpler. They should leverage the threshold, the scores that I mentioned earlier in this presentation. If you filter anything above 70, uh, let's say a score of 0, 07, you keep only the high confidence and you remove the lower confidence recommendations. So let's do just that. And here we would get only what I would think are decent recommendations back. But threshold filtering won't save everything. And for my last example, you will see the other problem we've seen. In this case, we are matching muscles, or rather, we are looking at a resistance band. But if you look at the image, the image is mostly of a leg with a hand holding the band. So the two best results based on the raw model scores, you guessed it, are two other shots of pure muscles from the product catalog. And I don't think at this point, this use case can be saved. So to conclude on the ugly, these use cases could be improved with object segmentation, by using filters on the category, or with better imagery. But until then, on items where visual similarity is not an important purchase criteria, you should prefer other recommendation models. Looking at user interactions or textual content similarity can bring you a long way. So to conclude, there are three kinds of use cases for visual recommendations. The good ones, the great use cases, get immediate uplift from visual recs. For example, the nice fabrics that had different titles but very close vibes. The bad, the more challenging applications should use visual recommendations alongside other signals with other models to satisfy users while not putting all your eggs in the image basket. And finally, the ugly, don't judge a book by its cover. For some use cases like dating apps or storefront listings, visual similarity is not a predictor of user satisfaction and should be avoided altogether. I'd like you to think about your use case. What can image matching bring to your business? Would it immediately delight your customers? Would it be a good fit if you integrate it with other features of the user's purchasing criteria? Or is it ultimately a distraction? By looking deep at these questions, you will understand what your users want to see, and you'll build experiences for your customers that are a feast to their eyes. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you so much, Paul Louis. I knew this was going to be a fun one, uh, and you did, in fact, make me very hungry. Um, <laughs> so, so we won't hang out too much longer, um, but we did have um, a question about, oh, somehow I lost it. Um, so I'm going to have to try and do it from memory. But it basically, I think it was around, um, for looking similar, are we using a combination of the image and attributes? Is there a way that that's sort of baked in? Or do you recommend that that's sort of done external, kind of as you're thinking about sort of how all the pieces fit together? That's a good question. Right now, in the first version of Looking Similar, we use only your image content. The idea here was to keep things simple and allow product teams to mix, mix and match. Maybe you put one visual carousel on some categories, but not others. So the model itself only looks at images, but the API we offer to you gives you controls based on the other attributes. So you can display all the image models that are a good match within a category filter. Mm. Or you could show for a given product that is out of stock, any alternatives that are filtered in stock true. You could even use that for merchandising by, let's say, filtering on a cheaper price or more expensive, more exclusive items to build a specific kind of experience. We want the model to be simple to use so that you can build various different things on top of it using the Flexible API. Excellent. Well, thank you much, Paloui. I'm going to let you get some food. 
And I'm going to say goodbye to uh, to all of our uh, friends out here. And there is a QR code there that will take you right to, I think, information about the Looking Similar model within our documentation. Is that right? Or the website? Yes. Visit the link to get started. You will have example of usage and all the code you need to start getting image recommendations on your own data. Excellent. Well, thank you very much.